Hello everyone and welcome to OptimizeYourTeaching.com. Today's lesson is going to assume that everyone has already established a Google Docs account because today we'll be using Google Docs to create a self-grading answer sheet. Today's lesson will be the second of three. In lesson number one, we talked about creating the form. In lesson two, today, we'll talk about using the form. And in lesson three, we'll go over advanced techniques and handy tips. So let's begin with lesson two, using the form. The very first thing I need to do is I go to Google and I make sure that I'm signed in. If I'm not signed in, I, there's a button over here that would say sign in. Once I'm signed in, I go to documents and you'll see this screen. You'll notice right here at the top, generic answer sheet. That was the one that we were working on together. I click on that. Now what it's going to open up is the spreadsheet. There are no answers here yet. We haven't filled in any of the fields. None of the students had entered their questions. You'll notice though that the titles of each question appear as the headers in the spreadsheet. So I have first, last, class, and the numbers of each question. You can see why now it's important to keep those names short, otherwise these columns become very wide and difficult to, to navigate through. What we're going to do now is we are going to enter the answer key. So I want to go to the live form. This is what the students would see. This is our finished product. So now I'm going to enter in the answer key. So for first name, I'll put answer. For second, I'll put key. Doesn't matter which class I put. And now what I'll do is I will go through and put the correct answer for each question. I'm going to put answer A as the correct one for each question, just for the point of our demonstration. And then down at the bottom, I click Submit. When I hit Submit, I see here, uh, it gives me a message, your response has been recorded. We can change this in lesson three. I'll show you how to change this message. And we can also change some options here of what the students can see after they submit. Again, that'll be in lesson three. As you can see here, the answers are submitted. I have answer key, the timestamp is there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the form for the purpose of this demonstration and I'm going to enter 30 different uh, answers. And here are their answers. So, how do we grade this? Well, the first thing we need to do is install a script called Fluberoo. Now, you can see that I've already installed it on my um, sheet here, but I'll go through the process again so you can see how to do it. First thing you need to do is go to Insert. Click on Insert. Down at the very bottom of this sheet, you'll see the word Script, Insert Script. These are all types of formulas um, and scripts that people have written and they share for free online. I can find Fluberoo by going in through the education and looking through this alphabetically, or I can go up to the top here and just type in Fluberoo, F-L-U-B-A-R-O-O, -O, and here I get it. Okay, it says, Fluberoo is a free, easy to use tool that allows teachers to quickly grade and analyze assignments. Indeed it does. So I go here to install. Once installed, I get this message, the green light says installed, and I can close out. Now once I've done that, up in my menu bar here will appear a Fluberoo bar. So I click on Fluberoo, and it will ask me if I would like to grade the assignment. I've already run through this one, so it's asking me if I'd like to regrade the assignment. The process would be the same. So I click on Grade Assignment, and I get this menu. Now, Fluberoo is pretty good at guessing what uh, fields are questions and what fields identify the student, but you should double check it. So it's saying here that the first, last, and class uh, fields are used to identify students. Indeed, that's correct. Now it has number one, two, and through ten saying that each of these are worth one point. If I want to make questions worth more, I can go in here and offer different uh, types of options for each question. But I'm going to leave all questions equaling the same amount, one point each, and I'm going to hit continue. Okay, the next step is to go through and tell Fluberoo which of these uh, entries am I going to use as the answer key. So I go here, and let Fluberoo know that I want to use the answer key submission as the answer key. I click continue. And now Fluberoo will grade my assignment. As you can see down in the lower right hand portion, or lower left hand side of my screen on to the right of student submissions, it's given me a new tab called grades. Fluberoo tells me that the grading is complete and now I'm going to view grades. So if I want to go back to my student submissions, it's still here on this tab. That's the original sheet. 
This tab has now been added. Flubaroo does that automatically. When I click on that, it gives me my grade sheet. In the upper left hand corner, I will find an overall assessment. So it gives me the points possible for this, the average points that were scored, in this case 7.76, the counted submissions. This lets me know, oh wait, I know I have 100 students and 99 have submitted. Who's missing? And then the number of low scoring questions. Flubaroo indicates a, qu a question with an average less than, uh, I want to say less than 60%, I believe, um, as a low scoring question. So it's telling me that I have one question that is low scoring. And as you can see here, um, it has highlighted it in orange. I go down here and I find, yes, indeed, the class has got 50% on those. It also will highlight students who have fallen below 60% uh, or below. So I can see right away which students um, were having trouble. Okay, so one more thing that I'd like to show you. If you go back to the original uh, student submissions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to form. As you can see, the number has changed from 0 to 27. I know that 27 people have entered their form. That would be my 26 students plus my answer key. I click on form. I go down here to show summary of responses. Right now it's checked to accepting responses. I want to show summary of responses. This is a great tool. It will open up another window. Up at the top it tells me all the students first names and last names that have submitted. It tells me how many students out of each class have submitted. If you remember all these students from this example are from my first block class. It's also going to count my answer key, so I need to keep that in mind. It's going to skew the numbers just a little bit. And then it will tell me, this is great, it will tell me what answers were most common for the students. So it gives me a breakdown of every single question. Here I can tell that 52% chose A, 41% chose B. So this would be a topic of conversation in the classroom. Why were people completely confused between these two options. It would be a great way to go back into the hard copy of our test and take a look at that question. If I see a question like this and most of the students have chosen the correct answer, then that might not be an, a question that we need to spend time on in class if we're pressed for time. Okay, it gives the breakdown for every single question, it makes it quite helpful. That will conclude the second of three lessons in this three-part series about how to use Google Docs to create a self-grading answer sheet. Please join me for lesson three, where we discuss advanced techniques and handy tips.